So we've looked at all the software that you need and you got all of my hardware recommendations which is all linked in the playlist right here at the top of the screen if you're watching on YouTube. But what do you do in your hybrid ministry toolbox and where do you put the things that you create? You need graphics and you're creating videos and you're putting together slides. Where do these things go well in this episode i'm going to give you the six places that i think all churches should be leaning into and utilizing and how they should be uh, manifesting this idea of hybrid right and hybrid is taking your in-person moment and your digital experience and melding them together because people are whole people and they're not at your church for all hours of their week and all hours of every single day. So we as churches need to find a, an opportunity and a way to show up in the places and in the spaces where our people are, which is why I have created this podcast that will help us, all of us, navigate this brand new and ever-growing and ever-evolving experience of hybrid ministry. So what are the six places what are the tools that you should be using well first and foremost you need a solid website and so if you don't already have a website for your church that you like uh, or are looking to upgrade it the number one recommendation that I have is from the uh, people up in Canada pro church tools they have a website builder called nucleus and it is a fantastic tool it's a website builder for churches because it is so easy to use it's just simple like you don't have to understand web you don't have to understand coding you just have to get in there and they make it so simple to be able to build. It looks really, really good. If you're watching here on screen, here's mine. And I've, I've honestly, I've only spent like a day or two, like in total on this thing. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not, I'm not saying that to brag because I have absolutely no website skills. Like of all of these things, of all of these tools, like this is the one that I'm the least skilled with. So I'll have it linked down below in the show notes if you want to explore it or explore pricing or what that looks like for you and your church. But I I recommend using and utilizing the the tools that they've built out there over at Nucleus. Now, what about social media? So if you've been following along any length of time, you know that I recommend that you as youth pastors be on YouTube. But what if you're a church? What if you're in church marketing? What if you're in church social media? I still recommend YouTube. You know, for the longest time, YouTube was uh, sort of like the video holder. Like that's all it was. It was a platform that was in existence for us to record videos and plop them onto a, uh, a website like YouTube. And that was all that we did with YouTube. It was just a video container. But now it has so many more social media components. It has like the community tab. You can do lives. You can build playlists. You can drop your videos. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. And then they've also now added and woven in the component of YouTube shorts. You know, it's interesting. I was talking with one of my high school students this week, and I was trying to create like a game for download youth ministry called Pick'em. Um, and it'll be on the site here soon, but I was like, should we include TikTok or Instagram or like what well, I was trying to figure out, like, what are the kind of go to social networks? And he was like, nah, no one's really on TikTok that much anymore, which keep in mind, this is someone's anecdotal experience. But what we do know about YouTube is that 95% of teenagers are on YouTube and it's got long form videos and it also has the shorts feature, which has taken the world by storm. My my resident was talking in that same conversation. He's like, you know, when YouTube first came out with shorts, it was kind of like the least used platform of all of the social media, of all of the shorts options. He's like, but now it's, it's actually got legitimately good content. And so you can post your long form videos, you can post your live sermon, um, you know, live streams, you can post shorts and clips from those things, you can post shorts and other things, all of that stuff. If you're wondering, what do I post right here, detailed and outlined in my 100% uh, complete guide to hybrid ministry, it's posting ideas, it's, it's some of the hardware we've talked about, it's some of the softwares we've talked about, like, it's sort of the all encompassing guide to all of this. But the next social media that I think that you should be leaning into is the social media platform of 
Instagram. Now, Instagram really has three or four sort of like feeds built into it. It has the Instagram feed, which is the OG and has been around for the longest time. That's where you see what your friends are up to and what your friends are posting. It also has stories, which is probably where you dive a little bit deeper and see a little bit more of like the the nuance or like the real life kind of elements of them. Uh, And then it's got reels, which is uh, the short form vertical based video, which is where you find a lot of the discovery type things and then it also has the explore feature and so Instagram has so many places for you to lean into as a creator and as a church social media marketer now you might be thinking like should I be doing that even in student ministry because we have explored even recently like the question is Instagram dead and I don't think it's dead but I do think that it is less relevant with younger generations and so you just need to know your context and you need to know what your people and your students are leaning into but if you're like a church marketing or church communications person instagram is definitely a platform that you should be leaning into maybe even more in some cases than facebook which owns instagram and both of them are under the meta ownership umbrella the the next one i would say that i would recommend is tiktok and, and TikTok is still relevant depending on what's going to happen with the Congress ban and if it gets banned. Uh, but TikTok invented this short form vertical video based platform. TikTok is, is probably the hardest of the ones that I've mentioned so far between YouTube and Instagram to actually build an audience that matters. Um, and that's why you need to have a really clear next step or action step based off of your short form vertical based video. Like if it's a sermon clip at the end of it, have an end card or I like to have have a little watermark up in the corner that just points people to my long form video because out of my long form video that's where they can take a next step with a connect card or some sort of like you know typical church connect card next step type of thing i don't want to just have a lot of people views or a lot of followers on tiktok without giving them something to do in some significant way for them to take a meaningful next step and so that's what i'm always trying to do is i'm trying to get them from there to the next thing and the downside of TikTok is that that's getting them off of that platform and over onto another platform which is why I love YouTube so much because if we catch them with shorts they don't have to leave the YouTube platform to go engage with our our main source and piece of content furthermore I would then add Facebook in here and again this depends on the age that you're trying to reach But Facebook is fantastic for groups. Groups is a great place for community to kind of build and for people who may not know each other in person to get to know each other in like a digital experience, a digital moment. Uh, So like Facebook parent groups are a fantastic place to to kind of lean in and try to cultivate a little bit of community. If you are in a church, a Facebook page is worth having because you can also run ads to both Facebook and also subsequently Instagram and that's going to be where you can create a lot of your traction and your moments for trying to get people to to kind of experience and see your church for the first time because you can sort of target them with advertisements and ads and things like that that will help them who maybe don't know anything about your church now know some things and have the opportunity to get to know some things about your church. And then the sixth and final piece that I recommend is a texting slash email strategy, either or or both, whichever one is most suited for you and for your context. I think it's something like over 95% of text messages get opened. That doesn't mean that we can abuse it. We have to be um, strategic of what we do and not just send only text messages. Also, uh, a weekly like update email from your lead pastor is going to do wonders for your church communications for your church marketing and once people are in past sort of like the top of the funnel pieces of um, your your church they can then you utilize and, and use email to just know what's going on and it's almost almost like a, a weekly update it can also be a moment and an experience for your pastor to sort of like have that opportunity to to have a conversation and, and to chat with his members and, and let people know kind of like the pulse and the state of the church. Uh, without doing that, it, it does feel like you are only then relying on in-person announcements or in-person moments to really communicate and convey information. 
And that's what I'm saying. Like at the beginning, we live in a, a more hybrid kind of sort of space where where people, they may not be at church on Sunday. So if they miss the announcement on Sunday, then how do they catch back up with that announcement? So we've looked at, at software that you need. We've looked at hardware that you need. We looked at, we've looked here at different like platforms that you can lean into. But what do you do? Like what is an actual like getting started strategy? Like, you know, the places now, what should you actually start doing? Where should you start spending your time? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's going to be the video in the very next uh, installment of this playlist. It's going to be linked right here on screen. If you are watching on YouTube, go ahead and tap that. And as you do, don't forget that we are making digital discipleship easy, possible, and accessible. So as always, don't forget to stay hybrid.